Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at the uh, uh, Swamp Fox Sharpshooter Radical and I've got a bunch of targets out there at unknown distances and we're going to be, um, I've been working with this Radical um, for about two weeks now and um, I'm going to you know, give you guys my thoughts on what's good about it, some things that could be made better um so let's see we got this guy over here right and uh i'm gonna use the top part of the uh, vertical stadia line and i see well, if you look at that area between six and nine mils you can see how it's got those fine details i kind of look at that as a marker because that gives me a really quick reference um even in low light conditions of what six mils is um, and anything that's in you know, any human that's uh, inside of six mils, uh, you know, he's basically inside of 300 yards. So basically, I can just put the crosshairs in the chest, start banging away. Um, and if I like, basically, I'm, I'm aiming at the top chest. If he's, let's say, a little bit uh, further away, the bolts are just going to drop a little bit lower into his body. Okay. Now, one of the things I mentioned in earlier videos about the way these this crosshair is set up, uh, the way they come together, it can sometimes, like sometimes it can be like really hard to find where the center of the crosshairs are um, if you, you know, if, if it's up against a dark target, okay? And any combatants, right, because this is a combat radical, right? It's a milliscope. Milliscopes were basically used by the military there this is a combat radical um so one of the things i have found is that most of the time the things you're going to be shoot, shooting at are going to be dark and it can be kind of hard to find you know where those those lines meet okay so that's one of the first criticisms i have okay so let's go further back over there i have a car all right so real quick now here's the thing the the front of a car is usually about six feet wide. So that's the same as a man. That's about six feet tall. So the same deal here. I'm using that six mil marking. All right. So as soon as any any car that that's charging at me, that's uh, inside of that's basically six mils or 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 or, or smaller, um, you know they're going to be inside of 300 yards, right? And they're going to close that distance really fast. Uh, assuming that there's some type of suicide bomber, basically I'm going to get the reticle right on where the driver's windshield is and just start blasting. Bang, 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 bang. Okay. Okay. So that's how I would deal with that. Now let's see back here. I have another vehicle that's also heading our way. Uh, that one looks like it's a truck of some sort. So here's the thing. Most tr trucks are eight feet wide. Um, for the purposes of, let's say, dealing with a truck that's racing at you, I'm going to go by the same measurements, okay? Anything that's six mils or closer, uh, and I'll explain why in a minute, uh, is going to be inside of 300 yards. I would start off at the windshield. Now, this thing is a little further away. Uh, let's just do a quick reference. He's, like, at about three mils. Okay, so three mils, i got to reference my my cheat notes, okay? So uh, uh, three uh Three mils would put him at about 700 yards, okay? Uh, so here's the thing. I'm using the red dot to get back out to spot. I got, I got a red dot offset to my non-dominant eye so I can quickly get on target. And I'm working at about 12 magnification right now. That's that's 24. Now, the thing is, you got to do a parallax adjustment. With these types of scopes, anytime you're moving, you got to do a parallax adjustment. But... I'm going to work at 12, okay, because here's the thing. He's going to close distance really quickly. So the fact that he's starting off at 700 yards, okay, I mean, he's going to be at 500 yards in, in no time, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to start the same deal. I'm going to start with the, I'm going to, I'm going to because by the time I figure out that he's at 3 mil, 700 yards, he's already at 600 yards, okay? I'm going to put the crosshairs at the top of the windshield and start banging, okay? Now, What's going to happen is if he were a car, right, I would want him to be inside of 500 yards. Okay, But with a truck, because it's taller, uh, I'm okay at starting at 600 mils. I'm sorry, at 600 yards. Okay, 
because I'm going to start up here at the top of the windshield, start banging away. The bullets at that distance are going to probably drop near his front bumper, okay, really low. But as he closes distance, right, and comes closer and closer to me, he though that the impacts are going to start to rise. So as he closes in, by the time, let's say, he gets to 500 yards, uh, my impacts are going to be on his radiator, okay? And by the time he gets to, uh, let's say, uh, 300 yards, which is going to be pretty quickly, the impacts are going to be, let's say, top of the hood, uh, possibly going, you know, through his dashboard, okay? Um, and as he gets closer and we get to the point that I can actually see the face of the driver, then I'm just going to transition over to the driver's side and start banging away, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm using a technique of that's going to take into account the fact that he's driving towards me really fast, right? We're talking like, you know, Mad Max Road Warrior Apocalypse now where you got trucks like basically trying to run you down, okay? So as soon as he's within six minutes, within the... Um, uh, Anytime he's like in, at six mils, like this car here, I'm going straight to the driver. But even if he's like at 500 yards, right? Um, 500 to with a truck, let's say out to 700 yards, I am still going to want to start at the top of the windshield, in which case the bolts are going to drop into the radiator area and they're going to walk up towards the driver area as he gets closer. Okay, so that's my. That's how I would deal with a car that's like like or a truck that's charging in real fast. Now the reason why this works is like with a car, it's lower, right? So basically, what I'm really interested in is in four mils because at four mils, a, a car that's like six foot wide is going to be at 500 yards, okay? But a truck because it's it's a little bit wider, uh, a bigger target, I'm okay with it starting off at 600 yards, okay? So that's why I'm using the same measurement for either one. All right, let's uh, uh, back off a little bit. Actually, let's back out a little bit. Let's go to a different target here. All right, let's see. I got a guy over there. Let's see. Let's mill this guy out here. Okay, so let's zoom in. So we got uh, this guy. We can do a little observation. This guy is out in the open. He doesn't know that we're there. We can do a parallax adjustment. Zoom all the way up. Try to identify him. Okay, so clearly, so we can see that's Captain America right there. Okay. All right. So he's at uh, three mils. He's at three mils. So I'm gonna, I got to reference my notes. Three mils puts him at 700 yards. Okay. The holdover for 700 yards uh, is seven mils. Okay. So now here's the thing. If I go to the, to, to the down here, I, actually, I have to actually zoom back to find seven mils, which would be right about there but the thing is let's say the other thing i could do is i could dial up seven mils on the turns okay so i'm gonna dial up seven mils so now this is the swamp fox uh patriot uh six to 24 okay so one full rotation is six mils so i need to go to seven so i'm actually going all the way around to the one okay so now i've dialed up I've dialed up the seven mils. Uh, hold on, let me get back to the target. Okay, so yeah, I'm using, like I said, I'm using a red dot to get me on target without having to dial back. So now, since I've dialed up, I can put the crosshairs on his chest and take my shots, okay? Now, one of the issues I have found with this scope, if you look at these, because let's say we miss, right? Let's say we miss. Okay, if we miss, we're, we're trying to see what a splash would be okay so let's say the splash we notice that the splash is one mil down and one mil to the right okay then we just transition that dot to the target okay but here's the thing if you look at the dots let's go to that let's go to the two mil line because there's just a lot more dots there okay they give us what the the big dark dots are one mil and then the other ones in between i think i get like i guess are like two or like point uh two mils Okay, so here's the problem with this design. They give us like these really fine measurements, okay? Uh, but th the reason why it kind of doesn't make sense is because let's say the splash is a half mil down and like, you know, like a 0.2 to, you know, a 0.4 to the right. 
right? There's, you don't have those dots on the half mil line, okay? So, so you have like these really fine measurements at one mil, but you don't have them at the half mil line. Now, I'm okay with like, uh, like here's the thing. If this scope only had like one mil measurements on, let's say the one mil line, the two mil line, and three, you know, that would be fine because that kind of like all works together. What I'm saying here is like, there's no point in giving us all these dots that to me kind of look like a straight line, right? Especially if the scope's moving around a little bit, you know, if you're looking into it long for a long time, you've got so many dots on each of those uh, lines that it's just not useful because you don't have that many, you don't have that fine detail on the half mil line. So to me, it makes sense to either just put one mil dots, you know, on the one, two, three, you know, you know, and, or maybe put like um, the, the, a one mil dot and a half mil dot, but you don't need those extra three dots in between, let's say one mil and two mils on let's say the two mil line it, it's just not usable because if there's an impact that happens like you know uh if, if your splash is one mil and a half down right and you're trying to i mean you've got nothing to you know you, you've got no point of reference there so you know because a lot of people say oh the scope is too busy you know it, it's one of those things like it depends on what you're going to use it for and it has to be consistent okay if it's going to have like those fine measurements on one mil, two mil, three mils, then I think it also needs to have it uh, on on the half mil lines, right? On the, on the one point, one and a half and the two and a half and the three and a half. Okay. Now, if if it's like on a DMR scope, I don't think it's necessary. Okay. Uh, it, it would be necessary, let's say, on a like a long distance, uh, like dedicated sniping type of scope, right? But on a DMR scope where you're looking to do like really quick adjustments, I don't think like the 0.02 dots are very useful there. Um, I think that uh, um, we would be fine with just like one mil dots and maybe a half or maybe just the one mil dots and a half mil dots. Now, as far as measuring, like, yeah, out here, like if I needed to measure this guy, like exactly how many mils across the chest he is, like, yeah, you know, what? it's useful to come out here where it's like way out of my way. I got these fine measurements here. Let me do a parallax adjustments. And I can try to take a fine measurement. But here's the thing. We said this this guy's at about 700 yards. I mean, it is really hard to, like, especially against a, a dark target, to get that fine of a measurement. I mean, that's just the reality of it, you know. I mean, I would just quickly say that this guy here, like, let me zoom up. Uh, was my one? I would do a quick measurement and say this guy is one mil wide, okay? So you know, uh, one mil wide, I referenced my notes. Okay, so, uh, you know, basically, one mil wide would be about 500 yards. So measuring him lengthwise is always going to be a little bit more accurate. So lengthwise, we said he's at about 700 yards. And that's, for that distance over there, that's more accurate, that's more correct compared, because I've been doing this for a while now, so I know that at that distance where I have him, for the size that he is proportionately, he would be at, at 700 yards. Okay, so you know, I'm giving you guys a bunch of information to, to, to think about. And now one of the things you got to remember with this, this scope doesn't have a zero stop. And that's one of the things that's kind of sucks about this, uh, this Patriot version. You got to remember to dial back down to your zero. Okay. Uh, a, a zero stop would have been very useful. Uh, I'm okay with it not having illumination because what I find is that, uh, most of the time in daylight, I don't use the illumination because it tends to overwhelm the targets, even at like low light conditions, right? If you're looking at a target at that distance, right, what I have found on scopes that have illumination, once I illuminate it, uh, again, especially against a dark target, I can't see the target very well. So I'm better off just working with the etched reticle, even in scopes that have, um, that have illumination. So that's why I don't mind that this Patriot scope doesn't have illumination. Um, I do wish it had the zero stop. Um, now, the reason why I bought this scope is because I was looking for something because scope and mount, this thing is under two pounds. It's like one pound, 14 ounces. Uh, so I was looking to put something on a DMR rifle. Okay. So one of the things I'm finding is that like with, because there's a 30 millimeter tube. I mean, the eye box is just, you know, if you're a little bit off, it's, it's, it's really, it's really bad. Uh, so, so I mean, 
and I have another scope that's 34 millimeters. 34 millimeters is just so much better. And I, I'm just trying to decide if what 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 I'm giving up in weight saving is worth is worth the um, inconvenience of 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 going down to the 30 millimeter tube and having that worse eye box. And so far, my opinion that the, the way I've been forming this, my, my opinion has been forming. No, you're better off sticking with the 34 millimeter tube or just going to an LPVO uh, because a lot of times I'm working with like 12 magnification, which is right there. Okay, so 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 this is what here's 24. And we said that these guys, he's at about 700. He's at about 750. That's what you guys are going to look like. Yeah, that's the level of detail that you can see there at about 750 yards. All right, so in 24 magnification, you can see the, 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 the buttons on Thor's armor. Uh, you can see his helmet. You can see his cape at 700 yards. I'll do a parallax adjustment. Uh, you can see Captain America there. You can see his star on his chest. You can see the red and white stripes. Okay, so that's what a man would look like um, at uh, at 700 yards with uh, with 24 magnification. So let's go down to like 12. So that's the level of detail. So you kind of you can kind of see the star. You can see the stripes. You can see the buttons on Thor's chest. I mean, yeah, the 24 is probably a little bit better. I think 15, let's go to like what would be like 16, right? So that's what 16 looks like. So this is what I think. Right now we're at 16. Let's dial back just a little bit. That's That would be like 15. Uh, this is what we need, in my opinion, is really an LPVO that goes from a 1 power to 15, a 1 to 15 LPVO for a DMR gun, or if they can't give us that, let's say a 1.5 to 15 would work really well. Now, I know March, there's a company, there's a, a scope company called March. They've got a 1.5 to 15. It's like $3,000. It's not practical for most people. Even for like a combat type of situation, I don't think it's practical because to me, it's like all guns are in a combat situation, are disposable. They're going to get lost. They're going to get broken. They're going to get left behind, abandoned. You know, sometimes you just got to, you know, you know, so so it doesn't make sense to go into combat, into a combat situation with really expensive guns, okay? Uh, you're better off with having lots of cheaper guns. So that's why, like, I like Palmetto guns, and I like, you know, like primary arm scopes, like the SLX series. I like the Swamp Fox, right? The You know, again, $500 scopes. That's where I want to be. Even though I've got like a fifteen hundred dollar scope, I mean, I, I think that that's you know I'd rather yeah, I think most people would be better off with having like like three three uh, guns with five hundred dollar scopes versus like one gun that's the gun costs like two thousand dollars and the scope costs like fifteen hundred dollars. You're better off with more guns and more scopes because you know now you've got decoy guns, you got you know guns that can be get you know that can, can be can get left behind, abandoned, traded, you know all that stuff. So th those are my thoughts on that. Okay, so let's actually come back real quick. Zoom back. Let's see, I got one guy over here. All right, so this guy here we can see like from the waist up. So what do we do with this guy? He's sitting down. So from the waist up, he's about two and a half mils. Yeah, he's also diagonal, so I, so he's, I, would, I would say he's about two and a half mils. So if you double that, that's five mils. And five mils is about 400 yards. Okay, so that would be uh, so for five, so so for 500 yards, the dial up is three mils. Okay, so right now my turn is zeroed. It's at, the, it's at my my zero. Uh, but for 400 yards, three mil dial up, I would just go, just drop it down right there, bang bang bang. I wouldn't mess. I I don't like messing with the turns, especially on a scope that doesn't have like a zero stop, unless I need to. Right. Anytime you're messing with the turns, you're increasing the chance that, you know, like you're not going to dial back. It's just going to be in the wrong position the next time you go to shoot. So if at all possible, you want to just use the radical, which is going to work out to about 500 yards, which is that distance. Once you start, because that, because there it's like, I take my shots. If I'm off and I, let's say I splash down at, if I see the impact at the four mil line below him, I just transition that up. Okay. So I've got enough um, um, mill lines underneath 
that I can I can spot a splash and 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 and, and then transition it up. So so at 500 yards, that's what a man would look like. Um, and again, what I said earlier, I think there's like way too many dots. Let me zoom up a little bit. There's just way too many dots on that Christmas tree reticle. Okay, I love Christmas tree reticles. In fact, that was my criteria for buying the scope. I was looking for, uh, in fact, I, I was considering getting like a, a three to fifty, uh, um, like a like a three to fifteen, or something along those lines. But what I found is that to to go like the going up to like a twenty four power magnification, right, and staying as long as you're staying within the uh, thirty millimeter tubes, uh, it I was I was only like the weight, the extra weight was only. Uh, like one ounce, so that's why I ended up going with like a six to twenty-four instead of going to like a three to like fourteen or something like that. Um, but uh, what I'm finding is that I love. So my criteria is I needed a light scope where it was like a pound and a half. I'm sorry, it was less than two pounds to go on a DMR gun, and it had to have a Christmas tree reticle. Which this scope does have, but the Christmas tree reticle here is like, you know, it's there's just too many dots. And if you're looking at this for a long time, those dots start to look like a straight line. So I think what we needed was just one mil dot and maybe a half mil dot, and that's it. I think that would have worked a lot better for this scope. So then my thoughts on that. Let me know what you guys think. Drop some comments below, and we'll talk soon.